So last week I reviewed the HP Spectre X360 14 inch, and this week I'm reviewing its bigger brother, the 16 inch version. Now, even though both laptops look identical, the main takeaway with the bigger version is you get a bigger display and the option to spec it with a dedicated GPU. Now they're identical, like same aluminum lid, same nightfall black color. As you can see here, there's a ton of fingerprints on the lid already and I've just started touching it. And look, it's a beautiful color because depending on how the light reflects off of the top lid, I sometimes think it actually looks navy blue. It's a little squishy on the top over here, but it is a magnesium alloy chassis. This is obviously a bit heavier than the 14 inch model at 4.3 pounds instead of 3.2. The port lineup is identical. So on the left hand side, you get a USB A port. This one does not have a flap because the laptop itself is a bit thicker. And then of course, because this is using that gem cut design, you have your combo audio jack on the back left corner. And then on the back right corner, you have a Thunderbolt 4 port, HDMI 2.1 and another Thunderbolt 4 port. Now I would have loved to see another USB A port on this or even another type C port, but this should definitely have an SD card slot. Like this is coming with a dedicated GPU. It has a beautiful OLED display. Photographers are gonna be using this. Video creators will potentially be using this and they're gonna want SD card slots. Now with my HP Spectre 14, I got two different dongles, but this one, no dongles came in the box, which probably means it doesn't come with the retail units and HP probably just sent those out with the review units, so I apologize for that. But it does come with a pen. This came with the HP pen. It works absolutely fantastic. It feels just as smooth to write on the display like it did with its smaller 14 inch model. And because that panel is 120 hertz, you just get really low latency. I should also say that the magnet on the right side of the laptop is super strong. Like I can bounce it off the table and the magnet just like catches it. Like that's pretty, come on, that's pretty impressive. Now, if I shake it hard enough, it's obviously going to fall. But if I do this, it's not going to go anywhere. Now, one person in my YouTube short unboxing asked me how the laptop feels on your lap. I've already tested it out and look, it's comfortable, you know, like it's a good size. It spans across my entire lap. I can go hands free. I don't feel like it's going to fall off my lap. Like it's very good. I will say it's a bit top heavy just because this display, you know, is a heavier display than most other laptops. So just keep that in mind. Like you don't want to have it too close to the front of your knees or obviously it's going to fall off. But if you're just like sitting here and working all day, it feels very good to use. Now, because this is a convertible or two in one, the display can flip 360 degrees. So you can use it as a tablet if you want to. This hinge is nice and stiff. There's not a ton of wobble. Like if I hold it like this, it's just not going to fall straight back, which means it's nice and tight. But I absolutely love this keyboard. It's exactly like the Spectre 14. Now, some of you might complain that there's no numpad. Personally, I don't want one. I don't need one. I don't want to see it on a laptop, but I get why you do. A lot of you crunch numbers. It's super important. I just think overall it makes the laptop cleaner without one. Like these keys, super clicky. It has a nice sound. They just feel so good to type on. And then you get this massive, massive touchpad, which is haptic which is the same idea and concept that MacBook Airs use it. And it feels really good to use. Like after using this, you're not gonna wanna go back to a plastic or a glass touchpad. This should be the gold standard on all laptops going forward. Now you have top firing and bottom firing speakers. The sound quality on this laptop is pretty good. I'm gonna compare it to the MacBook Pro 16 and you guys let me know which one sounds better. I should also mention about sticker placement. Uh, they're pretty straight this time. Sticker Man did his job, but I don't see an IMAX enhanced sticker. The color gamut is pretty much identical to the 14 inch model and same with the color accuracy. The only thing that's a little bit different is I did find the screen brightness to be a tiny bit lower on this one, not by much, but it is a tiny bit lower, even though technically this is an HDR display with a peak brightness of 500 nits. Now, one of you also asked me about PWM flicker. Now, PWM flicker on this laptop is really good. Like even below 50%, it didn't start having that flicker. So these new generation Samsung panels are obviously much better. 
but I did notice some latency. Like I noticed some latency or screen tearing rather when I was doing the screen tearing test and even when I was playing games. So there's definitely some sort of software update that needs to happen. I should also mention that there's a fingerprint scanner embedded into the power button or you can use the cameras for facial recognition if you want to use your face instead. So fun fact, this is actually a 4K camera, but it only shows up as a 1440p camera under the Windows camera app. If you go into HP's app where you can adjust things like the frame, uh, blur the background, etc., you can actually record a 4K video using the front-facing camera. Now more importantly, I think it looks pretty good, but also let me know how the microphones sound. Now this does have a bigger power brick, 140 watt adapter, which is bigger than the 14 inch model, just because this does come with a dedicated GPU, but it's using a type C connector. And this is a great thing, you know, type C means if you lose this power brick, you don't have to find a proprietary power brick to replace it. You can just go on Amazon, find a 140 watt GAN charger and use it with this laptop. Now this retail unit comes with a Intel Core Ultra 7 155H. You have 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5X memory, beautiful 16 inch OLED display, 2.8K resolution, one terabyte NVMe SSD. Now performance is where things get super weird because this is not performing as it should. Now single core clock speeds are identical to the competition which is great, but multi-core speeds were a lot higher to laptops that are in 14 inch chassis, including the Spectre 14. Mozilla Firefox, which is a test that should complete in the 20s with most CPUs that are similar to this, this one completed it in 55 minutes. That's way too long. Now, all of these tests were done with the performance profile on under the My HP app and it just didn't make a difference. I could not push this thing to its full potential. I even checked the CPU power compared to the 14 inch model. This one was topping out at about 28 to 29 watts. The 14 inch model was hitting like 36. Now it's not a drastic difference, but it's still a difference considering that this is a bigger chassis. Even things like the average core clock speeds were higher on the 14 inch model. But then I checked the CPU temps and the CPU temps on the 14 inch version were in the high 80s. This one was in the mid 60s. So that automatically tells me that there's a lot of thermal headroom here that's not being utilized. Now the advantage to all of this is that the fan noise was always pretty low on this laptop. Like even when this thing was under full load, it would be like 44 to 45 decibels, which is, you know, you can hear the fans, but it's not overbearing like a typical gaming laptop. Now, what all of this tells me is that the hardware is fine. It's just that whatever software or BIOS HP is running on the 16 inch model needs an update to push this laptop even harder. Now the RTX 4050 is running as it should. So that's a good thing. And if you want to game on this, you totally can. I did again, notice some screen tearing or frame drops in the games I was playing, but the frame rates were always averaged correctly for this type of GPU. I don't recommend gaming on this laptop at 2880 by 1800. The 4050 is not powerful enough for that unless you're playing like a super old title, but this laptop should be played at 1920 by 1200 and you'll get really good frame rates at that resolution. Now to get inside, there's only four screws you have to remove, but not much is upgradable. RAM is soldered onto the motherboard as is with all core ultra processors this year, but you do have one drive slot, which is under here that you can upgrade to something bigger if you want more storage space. You do have a swappable Wi-Fi 7 card. You do have a two fan solution. They're pretty big fans. I would have loved them to be on separate sides with copper in the middle, but they're stacked. And then you have two massive copper heat pipes running across the top. Now, battery life on this wasn't nearly as good as the 14 inch model. Like this is an 83 watt hour battery and only got five hours and 33 minutes before needing to charge. So here's the thing, the HP Spectre 16 has all the things that make the HP Spectre 14 very special, plus with a dedicated GPU. The only thing I can say right now is I don't like the battery life and you're not getting the full performance that this laptop should be offering. Now I'm not saying don't buy it. All I'm gonna say is don't buy it yet. I wanna see if it's specific to just my unit or if there's a specific software update that HP is going to push to unlock its full potential. Now, if they do, 
I'm not gonna make an entire new video about it, but I will make a short about it and I'll place a link to it in the description down below. That wraps up my review of the HP Spectre X360 16 inch. If you have any questions, let me know. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.